you to draw a simple graph. Okay, simple graph. I tell you that you're getting your first job out of college and you make the choice to buy a brand new car worth exactly 20000 Whether that's a good choice or not, that's, we're not talking about that. Okay? One year later, the value of the car is 17000 Graph that. It's worth 20,000 brand new. Exactly one year later, it is worth 17,000. So I like what I'm seeing Evelyn do. She says, this is year zero, here's year one, two. So year zero, I'm gonna go right up here and go 20,000. Year one is 17,000. So it's looking something like this right now, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So. I'm telling you that the value of a car in general represents exponential decay, the value of a car. How many of you have heard that when you buy a car and you take it off a lot, it dramatically goes down, the value of the car, but it's driving it off a lot for most cars? Oh my goodness, that's crazy. Okay. <laughs> so, with this information, you have a minute and a half to come up with an equation that models this data. Ready? Get set, go. Maybe this helps you. Okay, Irvin, I'm ready. Go ahead. Give me the answer. <laughs> So Irwin's got that part right. Now, turn to your partner, because I'm going to ask him in just a second, your lifeline is Franco, and I want to know, what does this equation represent? Like, what is the use of this equation? Turn to your partner, go. that it represents the value of your car, the depreciation of how much it's gone down after a specific number of years. Okay, now here's the next thing. When you look at this equation, what does the depreciation rate appear to be per year? Turn to your partner, come up with an answer. So I'm gonna call it Urban, but I'm not gonna tell you if he's right or wrong. I'm gonna call somebody else to say, yes, I agree with Urban. Or no, I don't agree, and here's why. Urban, what do you believe? Point five. Okay, so Urban said, please listen, Urban said the depreciation rate is 0.85. So 85% depreciation rate. So does that mean, Urban, just clarifying for somebody else, that means every year your car depreciates 85% of its original value. But isn't this a percentage? Okay, realistically, people aren't buying cars if they're going down 85% per year. Do you guys agree? Yeah. This right here, before we do anything, is considered 100%. So what is 100% as a decimal? I'm hearing different answers. Turn your partner. What's 100% as a decimal? What is it? 1.0, 1.00, right? Like $1. <laughs> so you've gone from $1 now down to this. So in fact, what is the 
depreciation rate? 15% per year. Turn to your partner. How do you get that? 15% per year. Thumbs up or thumbs down if you're understanding that aspect. Okay. We're moving on to dust bunnies. Here we go. Dust bunnies. Okay, so we have a dust bunny that gathers dust at a rate of 1.5% per day. 1.5% per day. It gathers. You're gaining. And you know the original weight of the dust bunny is 0 0.25 ounces. And you want to know, after approximately three weeks, what is the weight of the dust bunny? So to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to set up the equation. And I'm going to go with what we kind of did in the math intervention. It looks like this. So we know the original, original weight goes here. We know that the rate goes here. Now the rate is not 1.5 because just like the car, you start with 100%. The car went down, so we decreased by 15% to get 85%. In this case, we're gathering dust, so we're going to add 1.5% to an original 100% which gives you 101.5%. Now, when I write that as a decimal, it's 1.015. I'll write this a little bit larger. Because 100 is always your original amount. And then just like the car, when your car depreciates, we subtract 15%. And because it's going down, in this case, we're gathering dust. We're going up. Okay, so here's our original weight. Here's our rate. Now, how often does this occur? Every day. And we, so this is my equation right here. If you're asked to create an equation, that's your general equation. And you will be required to do that for your test. Write a general equation to represent this. And then it says, solve that equation for three weeks. But here's the problem. What is this in terms of? Days. And I need three weeks in terms of days, which would make it what number? Okay, so let's take 1.015 and raise it to the 21st, because we know 21 divided by 1 is just 21. Take it times the original weight of the dust bunny, which is 0.25. And if we round to the nearest hundredth, we have 0 0.34 ounces. Check with your current partner to make sure you understand. Move back to your original seat. to weigh after 28 days. So how this works for your test is you have a line that says what's the equation. Okay, so I have my original weight. My rate is 100 plus 2.5. 
So that's 102.5%. When I write that as a decimal, it becomes 1.025. How often does it occur? Once a week. Now, if you want to turn that back into days, you're fine by doing that. So if you're like, oh, I have days here, let's go to days. Then you're fine. Put a 7 here. It represents because one week is equivalent to seven days. I'm going to put x above and a y here. This is your equation. Now we're going to solve that for 28 days. Go ahead and see if you get the same answer as I do. Please round to the nearest hundred. Make sure to use parentheses. One to five, your level of understanding. One to five right now? Okay, let's go population next. Population is next. A small town in the Midwest currently has a population of 3,211 residents. 3,211 residents in a small town in the Midwest. It is expected to triple every seven years. It is expected to triple every seven years. Approximately how many people will be living in the town after 25 years? Well, first we have to write an equation. So what's the original amount? 3,211. Triple is the rate represented with the number three, and how often does that occur? Every seven. Every seven. There is the original problem. Now, when we solve it, we're going to substitute a 25 in. Go ahead. with your partner before we try another one. of Verde Hill had 4,254 residents. It is expected to double every five years. It's expected to double every five years. How many residents can we expect to be living there after 13 years? If we always assume we're not going to have a partial person, we could say uh, approximately 25,792. Well, if we assume we can't have a partial person, which would automatically round it up. 
okay? Who's getting this number? Hands up high just so I can see where we are. Let's go to the one that confuses students often, and that is going to be half-life of isotopes. Anytime they say half-life, that means your rate is one-half or 0.5, and you need to find how often does that occur. Okay, a certain isotope has a half-life of eight hours. A certain isotope has a half-life of eight hours. If after 48 hours there is 0.255 milligrams remaining, that's after, bless you. Okay, after 48 hours, this is this much remaining. I want you to identify the initial mass of the isotope. Once again, the half-life is 8 hours. And after 48 hours, there's this much remaining. What is the isotope's original Initial mass. Original initial are really the same words. So here we go. We, we're going to have y equals, we don't know the initial amount. We know we're talking about a half-life, and that occurs every eight hours. Now for this particular problem, it says 48 hours corresponds to a mass of this amount. So 0.255 equals initial mass times one half raised to the 48 over eight. Notice that this initial amount is being multiplied by this quantity. So grab your calculator and take the 0.5 raised, make sure you put in parentheses, 48 divided by eight, or you know it's six. And we do not want to round the decimal. So I have a sub one times this quantity. Opposite of multiplying is so how can I divide that exact amount? First, let's write down 0.255, and to divide by this previous amount, I do second answer. And there's my answer. The initial amount was 16.32. Would you like to see one more like that? Same concept. This time we have a half-life of a substance. I'll wait till it's quiet. This time we have a half-life of a substance that is 430 years old. The half-life is 430 years old. So what would you set up? Half-life is 430 years old. You find a particular substance, and at this point, there's 2.5 grams left of the substance. And it's expected to be 205 years old. 205 grams left, and it's expected to be 205 years old. We want to know the initial amount. So here's how I set it up. And then 2.5 is your weight at the time where we expect it to be. 205 years old. Solve for a sub 1. raised to the 205 divided by 430. Okay, keep this decimal on. We don't want to round it. Currently, a sub 1 is being multiplied by that quantity. Let's divide by the quantity on our scre screen. So I'm going to take 2.5 to divide by the exact same quantity. And now rounding it to the nearest hundredth would be approximately 3.48 grams. 1 through 5, your level of understanding, 1 through 5. Wait for everybody to give me a one five. Okay, please talk to your partner. I see a couple twos and threes. Talk to your partner, please. Okay. 